The doctor of the future won't heal diseases anymore, but will stimulate the body to heal itself using acoustic information technology. This sounds new, but it is a development which is available for everybody today. This technology has been developed on behalf of governments and pharmaceutical industry and, as always with genius inventions, is being thwarted by exactly these lobbies at the moment because it is a technology which is available about 20 years too early. Dear viewers, welcome to this exciting interview. Dear Hans, exactly this is the topic you have been doing research for decades and the acoustic information technology is the result of it today. Yeah. Please tell me and tell our viewers what is the basis of this development. Exactly 37 years ago my mother died of abdominal cancer on the 10th of October in 1977. So I did my grandmother and my great-grandmother as well and I asked the head physician, is there something we can do against this illness? And what he said now was the key happening which caused me to develop this technology over decades. He said, Health is knowledge and illness is power. These words from a head physician. So very honest. Yes, but I didn't understand it that time. I thought, okay, everybody knows what health is and illnesses, well, we have to live with them. But if somebody tells you health is knowledge and illness is power, I realized that I had to put knowledge into health so that I can define the power which causes illnesses. What power produces illnesses? It was in 1977, I was a physician that time and my dissertation was called CIEM, Creative, Intelligent, Universal Matter. I started to analyze illnesses and especially cancer energetically. And about three years later I came to the result that we are treating something without knowing what it really is. We don't know what diseases are. And so I asked the question, if I treat something within a human body with medicine, out of how many chemical elements actually does the human body consist? We know the periodic system of Mendeleev with its 108 elements, but out of how many chemical elements does the human body consist? It took five years until I had found the answer in cooperation with scientists from the NASA, as I worked for the NASA at that time, and the answer was 62. We consist out of 62 chemical elements from the periodic system. We know that every element has its own frequency and therefore it was totally clear to me that I have to digitalize these frequencies of the 62 elements before I can treat any disease. Don't forget, this was at the beginning of the 80s. The computers were just about to exist. It was quite difficult and we didn't really know how it worked, but already at that time billions were invested into healing illnesses without really knowing what illnesses are. Actually, the 62 were important, because if the body consists of 62 chemical elements of the periodic system, you have to address exactly these 62 elements, not more and not less. And this was my first mistake I made as a scientist. In 1981 I started to study and analyze the frequency technology. 
The zapper didn't exist at that time, but uh, in the 30s, Dr. Royal Rife already started with the frequency cannon and started to see viruses by using a different kind of light. And at that time, frequency technology was broadly supposed to have a positive effect on human health. So I dealt with the frequency technology for about 20 years. I invested a huge amount of my own money into it. And towards the end of the 80s, I started working with Hulda Clark, who invented the Zapper. We both attended the same healer school and had a clinic in Tijuana. I worked with Karl Donsbach and Hulda Clark had a cancer clinic in the same street. But by the time our ways separated, as our science differed. My results were, if the human genetic material consists of 62 chemical elements, animals as well, by the way, I didn't understand why I should send five or eight thousand frequencies using the Zapper by Hulda Clark, for example. There are more than 200 different devices using this technology to send frequencies to the body in order to achieve a reaction. Most of us know the tens units from the pain therapy. 99 to 100 hertz is the impulse of the pain. Very effective with athletes, for example. You put on two electrodes and the pain is gone. But if you send several hundred frequencies, the question was, how does the body react? And one of the most important questions I had to solve with my partners was the following. A frequency is a sinusoid. So using electrodes or acoustic information technology, I send sinusoids to the body and therefore it is important to know how our organism works. I started studying medicine at Stanford University and in 1994 I got to know Bruce Lipton, with whom I work together very closely. And Bruce Lipton changed my view of the world entirely. He said, for example, the membrane has got a sodium-potassium pump producing 1.4972 millivolt to 1 millivolt and the frequency technology cannot have any effect on the entire human organism, but only on the nerve cells, because a nerve cell works 50 to 50 like a bar magnet and a body cell works 60 to 40. If you are pointing out now that the so-called watering can principle, which means to send a huge amount of frequencies to the body, although he only consists of a few elements, why didn't Hulda Clark herself get to the conclusion that it only makes sense to send those frequencies to the body, which really cause a response? Very difficult. The frequency technology was broadly accepted by most governments worldwide. <laughs> okay, <laughs> understood. I tested or even bought all available devices using frequency technology myself and I used them myself. And the key happening was in 2005-2006, when suddenly more and more people using the Zapper and other frequency technological devices died without clear reason. Lawyers then investigated these deaths and uh, they started to discover that there was a connection to the Zapper. And those who had not listened to the scientific results in 2006-2007, such as Hulda Clark herself, are all dead. Die also den wissenschaftlichen Ergebnissen von 2006, 2007 
keine Bedeutung bei zugemessen, den, ja, beigemessen ja, haben. Ja, ja. Hulda Clark is also that she didn't die due to a backbone injury, but due to cancer. In fact, the same kind of cancer which she said to have healed in her book. She was also arrested in the USA. And for me, it was then time to ask, what do we do now? Almost 70 years of frequency technology, which was accepted by almost everybody, is this the right way or are we actually barking up the wrong tree? So I decided we are wrong. Frequency technology is harmful to our health because the cells cannot document the superfluous frequencies and because we just work differently. Since 2006 we have known that we have two different systems in our body. One is the nerve cell system and the other one is the body cell system. The nerve cell system works 50 to 50, so when I send a sinusoid to the body, which is also working 50 to 50, this is understood only by the nerve cell system, but not by the body cell system, which is 60 to 40. So we solved this problem by producing a double frequency. The only way to speak with a body cell, a double frequency produced works like the following example. When I send 30 hertz via sinusoids to the body, this is understood by the nerve cell, but not by the body cell. So I have to split the 30 hertz in two frequencies, 18 hertz amplitude and after a short break, 12 hertz amplitude and then the body cell understands, okay, this is both together 30 hertz. Extremely difficult because of the speed at which we send information to our body. It was hardly possible to control it. So I invented the acoustic information technology and I digitalized every bit of information I wanted to offer to the body. I said what I wanted to say and digitalized this recording. For example, when I say, I love God, then I is 9, love is 56, and God is 36, so the sum is 101. If I say 101 or I say, I love God, it's the same information, exactly the same information. And for this reason, we now have the possibility to respond to the statement of the head physician 30 years ago. Health is knowledge and illness is power. It was absolutely clear to me that I had to study the knowledge of health and in 2007 there was the big breakthrough. I worked with colleagues from Australia and together we found out the human body and me as well. I am 100% of energy. 95% of my body are always absolutely healthy. Let us just go back to the difference, which is absolutely important, just to recall it once again. The difference to the frequency therapy is, firstly, we consist of 62 chemical elements. That was the beginning. Therefore, it makes only sense to send information to these 62 elements and not to put thousands of frequencies into the body. Exactly. It all comes down to the energy. Since we have started fighting diseases, we are fighting illnesses that are housing in the body. And the master question is, how ill can a human be? I'm a doctor myself, but I don't believe that anybody has ever asked this question before. How ill can a human be? And when I asked this question for the first time, I had been working at the Academy of Science in St. Petersburg at that time, 
And I was in a conference and I asked, well, ladies and gentlemen, how ill can a human be? And the answer was, he can be that much ill until he dies. And I said, that's not the answer to the question. How ill can a human be? And when I clearly proved my answer, I showed mathematically the human body is 100% of energy. And from these 100%, 95% have to be absolutely healthy, always absolutely healthy, because those 5% which can be ill are equivalent to 50% of the energetical reserve of the human organism. When I've reached 5% of illness, cancer or whatever it might be, I used to call it building lots, then I have an energetic collapse. My work of 2008 and 2009, which led to the Einstein Award for my Genopole science, which I was awarded in Washington, revealed the following phenomenon. We know about 200 different kinds of cancer. I know somebody who has a 3 kilo liver tumor and lives happily. I know somebody with a 1 kilo gastric tumor and lives a normal life. And I knew a woman who died just yesterday who had a 10 grams breast tumor. So I put together all known symptoms in a list. There are almost 2000 different symptoms and I gave them an energetic value. What is important to know, a healthy cell produces energy. A living but ill cell doesn't produce energy anymore. But it robs energy from the surrounding cells. There are about 20 different classifications of energy robbers. For example, if you have a liver tumor, the cancer cells rob about 20 to 30 times their own energy need from the surrounding cells. If you are weighing about 90 kilograms like me, you can easily survive as long as the tumor is in a negative, negative state. A woman with a 10 grams breast tumor, consisting of cells which have transformed from negative positive to positive positive, it doesn't produce energy anymore and it drops up to 400 times more energy than they normally produce themselves. That means that it doesn't matter how big or heavy you are. If one cell robs its own need 400 times from the surrounding cells, you don't die of the 10 grams breast tumor, but you die of an energetic discharge of the whole organism. Now get back once more to the acoustic information technology. When you inform the human body acoustically, how do I have to imagine it? What exactly arrives in the human body? What happens there? I can answer it in one sentence. It's almost the only thing one can say that precisely. A healthy cell cannot see a cancer cell because there's no communication between a cancer cell and a healthy cell. There has to be an energetic exchange between them. The device I developed in the past 30 years enables the human and the healthy part of the human body to see the anomalies and the building lots. So I am at least 95% healthy and 1% of my body is a liver tumor. And it grows to 2% and 3% because my healthy body can't discover it, as there's no communication between the cancer cells and the healthy cells. This device is the first and, as far as I know, the only device in the world. The Geno 62 Sonic is the only device in the world to enable the healthy part of the body to see and realize the anomalies. And then it depends on your energetic constitution how everything continues. 
wie ist ja klar, wie ist ja klar, hm. das hat halt auch mit das zu tun. You can't du put all of your energy into this 1% of building lot, as we do at the moment. The solution is to tell the 95% of healthy cells to get together, to cope with this 1%. This one little percent. But this only works with acoustic information technology. This device, it looks like a normal MP3 player and it produces sonic waves. And on each of these two SD cards are 23 septillion bits of information giving an overview from evolution ranging from the beginning of mankind to the humans that we are today and the state that we are today. And part of what we are today is illness. We are not only healthy, but we have 500 millions of diabetics and almost 1 billion of cancer patients. The problem is that we have to, to spend and to give our attention to these illnesses because we don't know yet what health is. As soon as we have the knowledge about what health is, Illnesses lose the power. We have got the situation, as I said at the beginning, that you empower the body to make a difference between healthy cells and anomalies, and therefore to start the self-healing process. Uh, yes and no. Let me tell it in another way. 70% of our body consist of cellular water and these 23 septillion spits are stored by the cellular water. And the 95% of healthy organism now have the chance to extract this information from the cellular water to inform itself. This doesn't work within a minute or an hour. You can't say, oh, I've got pain in my teeth, so I put up my earphones and I am healthy in 10 minutes. It's a system which sometimes takes several months. But illnesses actually don't appear in one or two days as well. 90% of all cancer diseases develop from two to up to 20 years. A long period, a long process. The massive problem is this. If I have cancer for almost 20 years, but I don't realize it, and then I have pain and I go to the doctor and he tells me, oh my God, you've got a liver tumor. And I say, how can that be? I don't smoke, I don't drink. So obviously in these 20 years something has grown, which my healthy, strong body didn't realize. And to stop this, this, it's absolutely logical that I have to empower the human body to see the building lots, to learn him what building lots are. In energetic medicine, there are no illnesses, there are only building lots. I use a system of sending the knowledge about what is health to the body and therefore empower it to discover the building lots. So the necessary steps are the following. I put on the earphones, then I switch on this device and I listen to the frequencies that are on these SD cards. These are just normal earphones which send the information to the body. 60% on the right side and 40% on the left side. When this information joins in the middle of the head, it kind of gets whirled and only this whirling of 60% and 40% is able to enter the cellular water energetically slowly. To speed everything up, as we don't want to wait two or three weeks until the 23 septillion spits are absorbed by the body, I have looked for a system which has the same effect but only takes seconds. 
And that's the genius thing. The company Odivo developed a device called U-Sonic a few years ago. And its use of sonic waves is very effective. If I demonstrate it quickly, when I use these electrodes, either in my hands or under my toes, it doesn't take about five to seven minutes for the information to get through the whole body, but only seconds. I can measure it. When I put information into the head, I can measure the time it takes to get to the feet. And it takes about four to seven and up to ten minutes until the information has arrived at the bottom. And with the amount of information I have in this advice, it would take weeks until everything is where it should be. But if I use these electrodes, I speed it up 3.5 seconds. From the head to the toes in 3.5 seconds. And so the whole program takes only 45 minutes and the sonic waves are used to speed everything up. Because the faster the information is transported, the higher is the chance that the information can be stored in the molecules. So how often do I have to use it? When you say the program takes 45 minutes, I use the earphones and the body pads, is this something I do every day? This device is an information system of knowledge. Let me compare it to a book. If this was a book with a thousand pages, I can't say I read it within 10 minutes, just quickly. It takes some days or even weeks. And as the system is not unknown, I got the Einstein Award for it. We are present in 72 countries. Millions of people have already used this technology and this device. And therefore we have a lot of experience and our experience shows that the best mode to use this device is to use it three times every 48 hours. Afterwards, once a week and afterwards once a month or twice a month depending on the personal state. In this cycle, the information, we guarantee that all information is stored in the body and thus we can guarantee that the suitable information can be collected by the building lots. And when the information is stored, there is only health in the body because we virtually overwrite the power of the illnesses with the knowledge on health of our own organism. Wonderful last words, the power of the illnesses is overwritten and as a side effect and that's what I said at the beginning, why the people who originally asked you to develop such a system are now a bit angry because the power of illnesses is also the power of politics, of pharmaceutical industry and of governments over us, over the patients. And from the moment on when you empower the organism to heal itself, you take away the power of the system and that this method doesn't only turn out friends is something that you and I know just too good. Dear viewers, a very exciting topic and a thrilling opportunity to start and achieve a revolution in the medical sector. We are talking about a technology which will probably turn into common knowledge not before 2030-2040, which however is already available today. www.cium-62.de is the website of Professor Kempe with further information and several video clips which explain decades of science far more detailed than we could in this short interview today. And as always, a warm thank you for your interest and your attention. See you next time and bye-bye.